Play for Instagram. Hello, hello, Instagram. Hello, Facebook. I think we're all on here. <laughs> Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Um, happy Wednesday. Happy, more importantly, carb day for all of you Trim Boot Camp ladies or healthy carb cycling for women ladies who are following our Trim Boot Camp plan. Um, speaking of trim, reminder for those of you guys who don't already know, our next round of trim kicks off on Monday the 18th. So if you guys are wanting to join trim, we actually filled up our January round, um, gosh, two or three days before the round closed. We had to close it early. And then we decided for um, those of you guys who missed out on the round to open up a pop-up round and that kicks off Monday. So you can get all the details at smofitness.com slash trim, but trim is essentially our eight week nutrition fitness big group program. Um, it's an incredible program. We get incredible results and yeah, so I'll post a link underneath um, on Facebook on the comments after this video and then Instagram, the link is in our bio if you want all the details. So today we are cooking, which I always love to kind of stagger um, my lives throughout the week. I like to do some kind of conversation, nutrition, education, that kind of stuff. But then for me, my true passion is in the kitchen. So, you know, the planning that goes into the ones that I spend talking, um, I love, but I just get so excited to plan the recipes because it's just such a creative outlet. Hi, Tracy, thank you. Yes, it's a, it's a giant mess. I'll show you real quick, um, my little Facebook crew, but we're doing new countertops and new backsplash this weekend. So right now it's, uh, it's quite torn up. We have no doors over there, so, but it's coming along. I, I'm happy that it's so much brighter and cleaner and my vision's coming to life. But, um, so yeah, tonight we're cooking. Um, we are making a really fun dish. This is something actually I've made before with mushrooms and onion. Um, so we're doing a different version, but with butternut squash tonight, because I just had butternut squash. Um, it's just one of my favorite foods this time of year, and I haven't had much of it. I've been so busy that I just haven't been able to really enjoy some of my favorite um, fall flavors and winter flavors. So um, we're making a butternut squash creamy uh, orzo pasta. So essentially we're kind of taking risotto and orzo and making it kind of a risotto version made with orzo. Um, so this is a high carb recipe. Um, one of the biggest things with Trim Boot Camp is that everyone, you know, low carb, they get the hang of it. High carb, actually, a lot of ladies are like, how can I get my carbs up? So this is a really great recipe for that. If you love pasta, um, high carb days when we do strength training is always perfect for that. And um, this is loaded with great complex carbs from our butternut squash, as well as, hey Susan, um, as well as the orzo pasta. So I'll show you guys what you'll need to cook if you're cooking along with me. But first things first is orzo. So orzo, if you haven't, um, if you're not familiar with it, is a pasta, but it's similar to rice in its kind of texture and consistency and shape. So if you guys can see it here, um, I know Instagram's a little darker for you guys. I don't know why. Facebook, my light is great. Um, let's see if I can adjust the camera for IG. Oops. Tracy, I almost just brought you on camera on accident. Um, but orzo, it's just a um, kind of rice-shaped pasta. I love it because it's super versatile. Um, it's also really great for prepping ahead, where sometimes pastas can get kind of meh in the fridge, like they stick together or they're not as good. Orzo I find is really good for like pasta salads, and it's also great for this dish because it cooks really quickly. Orzo pasta, if you don't have orzo pasta, you can buy like the mini bow ties, you can buy, sorry my dogs are fighting, you can buy um, any sort of the mini pasta shapes and they'll probably work out pretty similarly. So that's the first ingredient. The second thing is butternut squash, which actually might, so butternut squash, I just went ahead and peeled it and diced it up. So this is the only sort of time-consuming time consuming part of this dish. Um, you just want to, hey mom, you just want to peel and dice your butternut squash and then roast it 425 for about 20 minutes. So, hey Casey, it's been forever. How are you, girl? And you just want to roast it up ahead of time and then that way it makes it really easy to just kind of bring this dish together in about 15 minutes. So um, with the butternut squash, if you're really busy during the week, I would just do it over the weekend, put it in a little Tupperware container and then put it in the fridge and then you can just pull it out while you're cooking and then dump it in and it'll heat right up um, in the orzo. So little tip there. I'm a big fan as well. When I do something like butternut squash, I always make extra. I could turn extra of this into a soup. I could turn it into a kale salad. So if I'm gonna go through the effort of roasting up one, I always roast up two. So I've got the butternut squash and we've got some onion. So one little onion or I think I had shallot on the cook with me sheet, but a small onion will work. And then two garlic cloves. That's gonna kind of be the base. Um, and then some spinach. So you can use kale, spinach, just shard, any sort of green. I've got about, I don't know, two to three cups. I'm really bad at measuring greens. I just say two big handfuls of two cups. So my spinach, and then the last thing is, not last thing, but um, second to last thing is some sage. So 
so just fresh sage. And there's just something about sage and butternut squash. They just go so well together. They're warm, uh, they're cozy, and the combination of the sage, the squash, and then the last ingredient, Parmesan cheese, is really gonna be, um, again, super comforting, which I was kind of in the mood for. Honestly, I, I had a carb cycled. Um, I did carb cycle over Christmas, so that's my family and my parents were here, so I'm actually just now getting back to it, and I will say that after two low-carb days, I am so excited for carbs. So this recipe could not be more perfect. Okay, so all we're gonna do to get started is turn my oven off, and we're gonna start with the base. So the base of this is just gonna be the onion and the garlic, and we're gonna create kind of a nice um, flavored oil, essentially, to cook um, the cook pasta in. So I got a little pinch of salt in my pan, a little pinch of red pepper flakes, and a little bit of olive oil. Probably about a tablespoon. You want enough to really soften the onion and garlic. And then I'm going to find a knife, which I think is over here. And I'm just going to take, sorry, my computer went dark and I thought maybe it was my Facebook. Um, I'm just going to take my onion, cut it in half, and then just kind of finely chop it. So you want everything to be sort of finely diced up here um, because you really want that to kind of infuse the oil with that onion and garlic flavor. So typically whenever I slice garlic, I always kind of thinly slice it. We're actually going to slice it a little smaller for this just because I want it to really kind of flow throughout the dish instead of have big sort of aggressive chunks of garlic. So got our onion, got my pan over about a medium heat. So you want to warm that oil up. And then little tip you guys can see, you just put your hand on the top of the onion, push down. You can kind of take your knife like that and score it. And then take the tip of your knife and go this direction. And then you put your knife on the board and you got a really easy way to cut, I don't know if you can see that, um, these little tiny onions. So that's a little fun hack. Another thing I like to do, again, for those of you ladies who are crazy busy, um, that need little prep ahead sort of hacks. If you're cutting an onion, might as well cut two, toss it in the fridge for dinner tomorrow. Saves time. Anything you can save time on, big fan of. So if I wasn't live with you all, I would be doing it. I always have Mike, he cuts onion for salad and I always have him like, hey, what are you doing there? Can you cut a little extra? I can always just use chopped onion in the fridge. All right, so got the onion in. This is a pretty small onion. You don't want a massive onion. Um, so we don't want the onion to take over the dish. We want to sort of just kind of be little ribbons throughout the dish of onion flavor. So that goes in. And if you guys aren't familiar, um, Term Boot Camp, we include my meal planning software called A Healthy Passion, uh, which provides all the recipes. So I think one of the biggest, probably, downsides to most fitness programs out there is that the food, they tell you what you can't have and what you can have, but they don't give you any sort of like guidance on how to actually make that food taste good and how to make it fit with your family and all the things you have going on in your life. So with trim, we include a healthy passion because we want it to be really easy for you guys to know exactly what to eat. Like food to me is the most important part. Obviously I love food, but I think that that, if you can get the food right, it's a lot easier to stick to a program. You know, fitness is one of those things where you either work out or you don't, but if you hate your food you're eating, you're eventually going to fall off because so much of life happens around food. And I was actually talking with a new client today and you know, we were talking a lot about her doing keto in the past, and I know a lot of you all in this, uh, in my healthy carb cycling group, you all come from that background of keto. And the biggest issue with keto is not the fact that it doesn't work. Like, you can lose a lot of weight on keto, but are you really going to give up carbs for the rest of your life? And then what happens when you don't stick to keto and you start eating carbs again? Well, you gain all the weight back and more. So that's why I'm so against keto and so into carb cycling, because I just find in my hands a quick wash. It's so much more sustainable and realistic for everyday life. Okay, so recipes are amazing. My three-year-old, seven-year-old, love them. Aw, thank you, Casey. Yeah, so the goal of the Healthy Passion is really to make it so that you're eating the same meals that your family is eating. Um, and it makes it just so much more simple to stick to. So this recipe, for example, if I was making this for kids, I would do all the same things. I would just probably go a little lighter on the sage for them and a little heavier on the cheese. So you can make one dish, you know, add the sage at the end on yours, add extra cheese on theirs, and everybody's happy. Um, instead of, you know, so many plans are like, here, eat, you know, grilled chicken and broccoli. Well, let's be honest, your family's not going to eat grilled chicken and broccoli with you for, you know, three months on end. So you're going to have to cook two meals, and that's just not realistic for any, any busy mom or dad, for that matter. Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit of butter as well. So I've got like a half tablespoon of olive oil, a half tablespoon of butter. Um, and we're just going to kind of sweat the onions and garlic down until they become translucent. So basically what that means is you start to see through them. Very, very simple. Okay, so while that's happening, let's go ahead and get the orzo measured out. So we're using a cup of orzo. 
and um, about two, let's see, what did I measure? About two and a half cups of water. We'll start there. Essentially, you want to create enough water to cook the orzo and let it kind of absorb in slowly, but you don't want to add so much water that you actually have to strain the orzo. So we want the orzo to actually absorb all the water that we add. We're actually using um, a veggie stock cube, so it's water, but essentially we're cooking it in uh, not chicken stock or a veggie stock. Okay, so I got a nice full cup of orzo there, so I'm gonna measure that out. Kind of keep an eye on these guys. You don't wanna let them get brown. So whenever you're sweating onions, you always wanna keep a close eye. Hi, Sally from New York. How's the weather there? Is it cold? I love when you all tell me where you're all from. It's so cool to see how many people are in this community from all over the country, all over the world, actually. So, so fun. Okay, so I've got my veggie stock cube, and I don't have a box of them, but they're the Edward and Sons, not chicken stock. If you don't have these, you could use just two and a half cups of veggie stock, chicken stock, any stock you like, broth, whatever. Um, but I like to keep these on hand. I know if you guys hang out with me quite a bit, you've heard this a thousand times, but I'm a big fan of the stock cubes because I'm only using a half of one, where if I open up a box of stock and I took out two and a half cups, I'd go back in the fridge and I'd probably end up forgetting about it. With these, you can just cut what you need and then never waste anything. So a little fun kitchen tip there. So that, I keep them in a mason jar on my fridge or my pantry, and they last, well, I run out of them before they go bad. Okay, so that looks good. So next we're going to add the stock. One half of a stock cube, one cup of orzo, and then two and a half cups of water. And I'm going to bring it to a boil. And essentially we're just going to cook this at a boil, but unlike boiling pasta, um, we're going to kind of keep an eye on it. So it's kind of like, again, a cross between a pasta and a risotto to where we have to keep an eye on it and stir it so it doesn't get too, like, stuck to the pan, I guess. Um, but you're cooking it where it absorbs all the water so there's no draining. So it's kind of cool. Fun little technique. And you can do any pasta like this. Um, just kind of Google the ratio of water to pasta. But um, I think that was like a trend maybe last year where people were doing like one pot pasta meals. Honestly, I never really jumped on that bandwagon. I kind of missed it. Um, but to be honest, I think I'm going to do that girl this year. So um, stay tuned to Healthy Passion subscribers because we are going to have probably some fun new recipes like this coming at you. And uh, if you guys missed my post yesterday, I had a call with my developer and we're making a lot of progress on our app and we added a cool community aspect as well. It's going to be launching hopefully in February. So um, lots of fun stuff. Tracy, I've been using the veggie stock cubes. Yeah, they're so great. Hey, Instagram, there's a bunch of you on. What are you all up to? I feel bad. Instagram's a little dark. You guys can still see me though, right? Okay, so pasta is starting to come to a boil. So we're basically just going to kind of keep a close eye on it. Let it cook. It takes about seven to nine minutes. So essentially the same time as it would if you just boiled it normal um, to absorb the water. And then while that's happening, I'm going to grate my cheese. So for me, the creamy part in this not only comes from cooking the orzo in the water, in the veggie stock, um, and actually enjoying it, you know, without draining it, but also from the cheese. So the starch from the pasta makes it creamy. And then in addition of a little bit of cheese, we're not going crazy here, only about a quarter cup of um, good, you want the good Parmigiano Reggiano, not like the grocery store Parmesan cheese, but good Parmigiano Reggiano. It's gonna add a nice salty, nutty flavor, and it's also gonna add a nice kind of creamy um, element, like you would have in a risotto. So we basically just wanna keep it stirred so it doesn't stick. Give that a good grate, and I am so bad about measuring cheese. I always just kind of eyeball it, but Trying to stay on track with trim and be good about everything. I did get out my measuring cups tonight. Um, and that's the cool thing as well with a healthy passion. So we count macronutrients and trim, and I feel like it's probably the best way to really understand how to fuel your body. Um, I'm not a huge fan of tracking because I think it kind of takes the pleasure and enjoyment out of food, but I do love to pre-plan. That way you know, again, what you're getting in. And again, you understand how a day is supposed to look versus just eating healthy. So it's very, very specific. But with a healthy passion, um, it's awesome because you just cook a recipe, you divide it in two, you eat half of it, and then you don't really have to think about it. Where with a lot of your programs out there that have you counting macros, you're literally sitting there, I think I watched a video of someone today with a food scale, putting your peanut butter jar on there, zeroing it out, like trying to measure out your peanut butter. To me, it takes pleasure and enjoyment out of food. Like it just makes it so weird to get there and like weigh and measure every single thing. So, um, you know, with the healthy passion, you do have to measure out your cheese a quarter cup, but once you put it in there, eat half the recipe, you know you're, you're good. 
And measuring does create a little bit of awareness because <laughs> with peanut butter especially, I don't know about you all, but one spoonful of peanut butter is definitely more than one tablespoon in my mind, in my, in my world. But I will show you all, this is why I don't measure because over the years I've actually become pretty good at guessing. So this is my guess on a quarter cup of cheese. What do you all think? I did pretty good, right? A few more of you guys hop on. Hey Kim, hey Roxana. Hey Rita, how are you all? For those of you guys who are just hopping on, we're cooking a orzo style um, risotto. So it's like a creamy orzo with butternut squash, spinach, and parmesan cheese. So we've got our orzo cooking in our veggie stock with some onion and garlic. Got my butternut squash here. I just roasted it up ahead of time, 425 for about 25 minutes-ish. I don't know, maybe a little longer. I didn't set a timer. Um, and then I've got my parmesan cheese grated. I'm actually a little short on it, but you know what? That's okay. And then I've got spinach here, so about two cups. I'm just gonna chop it up. This is gonna get stirred in at the end. I don't love my spinach cooked typically. Like sauteed spinach isn't really my jam, but there's nothing better than just like adding a couple of handfuls of spinach into a dish at the end and just letting it sort of wilt into the dish. Really good tip to help you all get more greens in. And you know, for me, I'm a big fan of just adding greens to everything. I find it's such an easy way to get them in without a lot of effort versus just eating salads all the time. Don't get me wrong, I love a good salad, but it's just easier for me. And greens really help with if you are trying to cut down on sugar or cut down on cravings. Um, they're so nutrient dense, they actually really help with reducing cravings. So, something like that. They also give you more energy for those of you guys looking for more energy. Just add some greens in. All right, so sage. You all don't cook with sage often. Um, you could also use thyme in here. You could use a little bit of rosemary. You could do um, fresh parsley at the end. Uh, don't go out and run out and buy sage just for this. Um, any herb will work, but I just find sage is just such a fall herb and it goes so well with butternut squash. So all you wanna do is just pull off the stems and then we'll sort of stack it up. And I've got one, two, three, four, probably about five sage leaves here. I just wanna stack them on top of each other. I think you all can still see my cutting board. I do like my new uh, kitchen setup. Y'all are on my island. Kind of coming down the island. Seems to work out pretty well. I have found my tripod since we moved, so um, stay tuned, because I will be using that again, but for now, this works. Okay, so then stack it up, roll it up like a little cigar, like we teach you how to do greens, and then you're just gonna kind of thin ribbons and then kind of roughly run your knife through it again. You want them to be sort of small pieces again so the ribbons kind of get throughout the dish. I'm going to give this a stir. And we're about halfway done, but I have pretty much done all the prep work and cooking that I need to. So what questions do you guys have? There's a lot of you on here between the two, between Instagram and Facebook. So what, what questions do you have on trim? What questions do you have on cooking? What questions do you have on life? What questions do you have on nutrition? What can I help you with? What's everyone having for dinner tonight? Love to know that. And a lot of you ladies that are on here are in trim, so you all can get this recipe. So with all my live recipes, typically it takes me about two weeks to get them into the software. I'm working on it, but I am a one woman show. So um, those of you with healthy passion, people who have access to that, if you guys wanna make this at home, um, you can log on, it'll be in, in the software here soon. So stay tuned. Um, I know we haven't had many new recipes lately, but I've been stockpiling them because when the app launches, we're adding like a hundred new recipes. So lots of good stuff coming. I think I made like 10 variations of egg muffins, which are probably my favorite um, go-to recipe. Ooh, grilled salmon and asparagus, yum. That sounds so good, Tracy. I had salmon yesterday for lunch. Um, but so egg muffins are probably my favorite go, like pep ahead breakfast for uh, low carb days just because they're so easy. So for me, with carb cycling, um, or I'm sorry, with trim, we do some intermittent fasting as well. So you typically are eating breakfast or breaking your fast, eating lunch, whatever, um, between 11 and 12 o'clock. So for me, I love to do breakfast foods. It's like, I just can't give up breakfast. Um, so I usually break my fast around 11 with something breakfasty. Um, and so for low carb days, egg muffins have become my go-to because they're great to just prep ahead. I pull them out um, probably an hour before I'm about to eat. Put them on the countertop, let them come up to room temperature, pop them in the oven for a few seconds um, at like 425, maybe like five minutes. Let them warm through and then I'll put a little hot sauce on them and they're so good. So I've been making a ton lately, so we're actually adding like I think five or six new egg muffin recipes to a healthy passion. So if y'all are egg muffin fans, keep an eye out for that. 
trying to think of what else good is coming. Lots of just like super simple recipes. I'm really getting back to basics with like four ingredients, five ingredients. Um, I think that's one thing with cooking that the simpler, the better, especially again, if you're trying to, you know, balance work and a family and kids and, you know, all those things. Um, none of us want to spend more than 30 minutes in the kitchen. And that's why I love this recipe. You literally can come home from work or leave your office and come in the kitchen from Zoom. Um, we love a good simple recipe over here. Yeah, Casey, me too. Uh, and just pop the butternut squash in the oven or as I mentioned, prep it ahead. And then, you know, this whole thing takes about 20, what time is it now? 5.53, yeah, so about 20, 25 minutes to come together. So again, if I wasn't talking, I'd probably go a lot more, more quickly, but you can see, I don't know if y'all can see that, but um, it's starting to kind of get that creamy texture. So like for dodo, you just want to basically keep stirring it until everything's absorbed all the liquid becomes absorbed. And you really want to take your spoon and kind of scrape the bottom. That way it doesn't um, stick. So just be really, really careful making sure it doesn't stick. Give it a good stir. Oh, she's popping on here. Hey, Casey, how are you? Who's on there? Hey, Taylor. Hey, Kim. Kim, what are you having for dinner tonight? Okay, so this looks so good. I'm so excited. Although, I don't think we're actually having for dinner tonight. I threw a chicken in the oven earlier and I made homemade bone broth and I think we're gonna do chicken noodle soup. It's our instant pot chicken noodle soup from Healthy Passion, but I make the bone broth first and it's so good. Cause I'm telling you guys, I'm craving carbs today. I'm so excited. All right, so the best way to know when this is done, this is still probably another minute, um, is to taste it and just see where the pasta is. You want your pasta to be not mushy, but not as al dente as you typically would cook pasta. So typically al dente, you want your pasta to be to the tooth. What cookware do you prefer? I need all new. Oh, Tracy, I um, I use all clad. I love it. Mm, about a minute longer. It's a bit of an investment, but um, their pans are great. I do the nonstick ones. Everyone always asks me about nonstick and how I feel about it. Stay away from Teflon, but nonstick is fun. I like all clad. Uh, my favorite one is, and I'm so bad with what size it is, but this big guy here that has the handle on it. I mean, I use it every day. It's amazing. And then I use a lot of cast iron too. I have about a couple of these guys that I love for any sort of meat. And when you're buying new skillets, um, what I always recommend is stuff that can go in the oven. So you want something that has no plastic on it. Because I do a lot of pan roasting. Okay, so I tasted it and it's not quite there yet. This is actually like perfectly cooked pasta, so if you want to eat it like that, that's cool. But I'm going to add about a quarter cup more of liquid and just let it absorb that last little bit because I'm really looking for that creamy texture. Okay, there we go. And again, you don't want it to get stuck on the bottom. So at this point, we can go ahead and stir in our sage. I'm going to sprinkle that in. Stir in our spinach, stir in our cheese, stir in our squash. Hey Elizabeth, how are you? Yeah, Tracy, I love cast iron. Kate Horning, you should do a healthy passion Starbucks type drinks. Oh, yes. Gosh. You know, I used to be a Starbucks like crazy person. I would get a latte every day on the way to school and Spent way too much money there, and I honestly have not had Starbucks in so long. I have two gift cards there um, that I haven't used, but I used to love their Frappuccinos. Maybe in the summer we could do a fun Starbucks Frappuccino series. I do make, um, I have like a latte. We have an espresso, so I make espresso from that. And then I have like a latte, uh, my mom got it for me. It's like a frother, a milk frother. And you just put the milk in there, push a button, and it frosts it up like a latte. It's amazing. So I have it in like a peppermint, a little peppermint stevia or um, some peppermint essential oil and some stevia. I'm making like their peppermint lattes. I don't know if that's a thing anymore, but I do love, I do love Starbucks. I just haven't been there in a while. Okay, so then again, everything's kind of coming together. You want to stir it all together. Hey, Sarah Graham. Hey, Josephine. Um, you want to stir everything together so that the kind of Sage gets throughout, the parmesan gets throughout. You want all the ingredients to kind of melt, I guess would be the best way to describe it. 
describe it. You guys can see whenever I go over this how like creamy and delicious it is. I gave up Starbucks. Yes, uh, Nespresso is so good. And to be honest, Mike and I like we do a pot of coffee and then Nespresso is more turning into more of a treat. Um, just because I'm such a, I like to have like a nice big cup of coffee and sometimes Nespresso gets me crazy. So if I do an Nespresso, I gotta be ready for it. I can't fast and do Nespresso. Usually it's like more of a with breakfast kind of thing. Okay, so everything's stirred together. So at this point, I actually tasted the pasta um, and it was good kick from the red pepper flakes, but I would taste one more time just to make sure it doesn't need any more salt. So one tip, whenever you're cooking, taste as you go. Um, obviously not with meat because you want it to cook, but with things like this, like taste as you go because you can only season it as you're cooking. Sometimes if you wait till the very end to season it up, it can be kind of too late. So I'm gonna go in here and get a little bit of everything just to make sure I like the way it tastes. And I turn the heat off here because we want it to stick. Mmm, um, parmesan cheese, butternut squash, and sage. Okay, maybe go, go buy sage for this. It's so good. Wow. Oh my goodness. Mmm, maybe I'm gonna have this for dinner tonight. I might not be into that, uh, that soup after all. Wow, it's so good, you guys. I'm gonna try to give you all a little better view here. But look at that. Mmm, creamy, cheesy, not too cheesy though. Butternut squash. It's so good, Tracy. Yum. Let's see what Mike thinks when he comes up. Um, yeah, so there y'all have it. My creamy butternut squash risotto, or sort of risotto. Elizabeth, yes. You gotta join a healthy passion. I see you doing Hello Fresh all the time. Healthy passion doesn't deliver your doorstep, but you can Instacart everything to your doorstep. And all the recipes are so yummy. <laughs> I got hooked on your lettuce wraps. Yeah, Tracy, I see you making them. I always love seeing your posts. Sarah Graham, yes, they're so good. So good. Cool. Well, I'm going to hop off here. I'm on tomorrow um, over, I'm going to be on Trim Bootcamp's Instagram again. And then as well, um, Healthy Carb Segment for Women. I'm going to talk about high carb days. So give you guys some tips for some of my favorite foods for high carb days, um, some of my go-tos for high carb days. Um, just, you know, again, how to get those carbs up without eating like tons and tons of like pasta and bread. Um, although this is pasta, but it's delicious. So hope you guys have a great night. Again, our next boot camp starts on the 18th. So if you guys are interested, um, shoot us a message, ask any questions, or um, check out the link in our bios over there on Instagram and then Facebook. I'll post the link for y'all. Um, but yeah, hope you guys have an awesome night, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. I always forget how to hang up on Instagram. There we go. And now, all right, bye Facebook. <laughs>